thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll go very quickly through Uranium Energy Corp. I know we've spoken several times uh, in the last couple days, but uh, really want to give you an idea of what UEC is doing in 2018. We're the uranium mining company focusing on in situ recovery technology out of the United States in Texas, Wyoming, and Paraguay. Uh, really, this sums up our strategy in a big way and, and what differentiates us from other producers in the space. We're a 100% unhedged producer, meaning we're not tying up contracts in long-term uh, long base escalated or fixed prices that are going to be an anchor around our neck as uranium prices recover going forward. That requires us to be disciplined and have flexible uh, production that we shut in during uh, periods of low prices, which is where we are today. We shut in our uh, Palangana operation in Texas in 2013 uh, and continue to drill out other properties in the vicinity with the eye to return when prices recover. Um, we also believe the downturns in any commodity present opportunities. That's been the, the vision of our founder, Admir Adnani, who uh, has uh, always made uh, accretive acquisitions in the downturn, added to our uh, productive capabilities and resources when the markets turn around. And then uh, resource management, produ production readiness. Just because we're not in production doesn't mean we're sitting on our hands. We are uh, drilling out additional resources on our properties. Uh, we are permitting, licensing, de-risking uh, to be one of the, the fastest response producers in the uranium market when prices do recover. So this is our basket of, uh, of resources as it stands today. Uh, the, the focus, obviously, is the Hobson Processing Plant, just 45 miles south of San Antonio, Texas. It's a, a beautiful state-of-the-art of facility. It's licensed to 2 million pounds capacity. Uh, within 50 to 100 miles of that operation, we have uh, 19 million pounds of uh, uh, licensed and permitted uh, resources, uh, in some cases, built and ready to restart it at, uh, within a month, month or two's notice. Uh, we have hard rock assets in the, in the western United States, which are sort of uh, tier two for us. We're holding those when the pipeline uh, needs to be filled at higher uranium prices, but the ISR mines are something that will come on before these, perhaps in the $40 to $45 market. Reno Creek, I'll speak to, is our latest acquisition in the Powder River race, Basin of Wyoming. And then Paraguay, we, we uh, went there uh, looking to acquire uranium, and we uh, have a very large land position and resource base in the country of Paraguay. And uh, we ended up finding one of the biggest uh, uh, undeveloped ilmenite titanium deposits in the world, which is something that we will look to uh, uh, perhaps monetize in the coming year and support our capital needs for the uranium side. I talked about accretive acquisitions, opportunistic uh, purchases in the downturn. A uh, great example of that is the Reno Creek acquisition in the Powder River Basin. This is in uh, region where other producers like Uranium One that you see in the news quite frequently, Cameco, uh, Energy Fuels and others are operating in the Powder River Basin. We believe that uh, Wyoming in the basin and South Texas are the best places in the United States and frankly one of the best places in the world to be mining by ISR techniques. This is the low cost, non-intrusive way to mine uranium uh, without excavating the ore body we're drilling and uh, extracting uranium by ISR methods. This acquisition, um, which doubled our productive capacity, our licensed capacity from two to four million pounds, was uh, done at only a 9% dilution to UEC shareholders, uh, and uh, also paved the way for us to make an additional acquisition from Energy Fuels in, in uh, recent months at North Reno Creek, which consolidates the entire property under one permit. Just where the basin is located, uh, uh, just north of Casper uh, in the Powder River Basin. Burke Hollow. This is where we've uh, increased organically our resources by essentially making new discoveries on very uh, sizable land packages that we have in, in South Texas. Uh, the United States uranium industry is really typified of uh, a lot of deposits that were discovered in previous exploration cycles. It's very rare that you have new discoveries in the U.S. because not a lot of money has been spent doing that. We have a 20,000-acre ranch at Burke Hollow, which is almost completely permitted now. It's just one minor permit remaining where we've uh, identified another 2 million pounds of reserves with a 130-hole drill program over the course of last year. 
so now a seven million uh, pound resource uh, at very uh, desirable ISR conditions. High grade for ISR, very permeable, high recovery. Uh, at Burke Hollow, we're, uh, uh, it's a good time to talk about some of the technology we're deploying. The PFN technique is something that's a proprietary technology that we're using. Uh, if you think of uh, the normal process of exploration drilling is to take drill core or sands, take it to a lab and have it analyzed for its uh, mineral content. In this case, we're just probing these holes with the PFN, the prompt neutron fission uh, device that is giving us an almost real-time indication of whether uranium's there and what depth it's located at. Uh, all of these deposits in, uh, in South Texas are done in what's known as a hub and spoke. They're satellite operations to the central plant. And uh, those of you who are familiar with conventional mining, the capital requirements in this type of mining is unbelievably low, perhaps 10 to 12 million pounds to build a satellite that would be able to produce up to 2 million pounds uh, a year from, uh, from a property like Burke Hollow. Uh, the uh, uh, time to develop also is, is incredibly fast uh, in an industry where it could take 10 years to bring on a new conventional mine and perhaps billion dollar investments. We can bring these on in somewhere from six to, to 12 months time. It's a very simple process of ion exchange, drilling and extracting. The Hobson plant, again, if we were to try to acquire an asset like this today or build it, would be a hundred million asset on its own. We picked it up from Uranium One and the financial downturn and is really the cornerstone of all our operations. So the company financially, um, we're fairly well cashed up at $19 million uh, in the bank. Our cash burn, because we're not in, op we're not in operation, we're not um, depleting our resources, and neither are we depleting our cash at the bottom of the cycle. So uh, at the current cash burn of about $9 million a year, we've got about a two-year uh, two uh, runtime on that cash position. Uh, spoke earlier about the titanium assets that we have in Paraguay, uh, something that uh, you know, we'll be looking to uh, bring on a titanium expert uh, in the coming uh, months that is going to be looking at uh, potentially monetizing that through either an IPO or through a, a private placement with someone in the, in the industry. But it is truly a, a world-class deposit of titanium at 4.9 billion tons at 7% ilmenite. So uh, in terms of our cash needs going forward, uh, we may be able to develop our entire assets in Wyoming and Texas without another dilutive raise just from uh, the proceeds of, of the titanium uh, activities. Um, 156 million shares outstanding. We have a very high insider uh, ownership, about 15%. Um, we're unique. We have 30 to 40,000 uh, uh, retail investors, but also uh, very good institutional uh, ownership. Uh, names like Morgan, uh, J.P. Morgan's Global Natural Resources in London, uh, Lee Kai Sheng out of Hong Kong, of course, Rick Rule and Sprott, and uh, KCR group with Marin Katusa as well. So, uh, good strong hands in in terms of our shareholding. So uh, in conclusion, I know we're running a little late here on the schedule. I'll just wrap up that uh, what you get with UEC is uh, a direct optionality on uranium price recovery. You've all heard about the big production cutbacks in Kazakhstan and uh, in Canada and Saskatchewan and other countries. We're now seeing a much faster rebalancing of the market that one was, that one then was going to occur even two years ago. Um, prices are beginning to move now after a very long bear market. Uh, UEC couldn't be better positioned with licensed, uh, permitted, built uh, operations and a great pipeline of uh, low capital cost uh, developments in both Texas and uh, Wyoming to grow along with the uranium price recovery. Um, again, the, uh, uh, some, some catalysts for the year. Keep an eye on our, uh, our titanium uh, assets and what we're doing down there. We've seen comps uh, of other uh, projects of comparable size and grade uh, that are trading themselves in the 240 million market cap range. So we may have an asset in titanium that's worth more than our entire market capitalization, uh, uh, including the uranium. So uh, in closing, it's exciting times for uranium again. I know if you've been an investor, it's been a long, a hard, patient uh, time for you. But uh, now if, you, if it's an entry point for you for the first time, the conditions for uranium look much better today than they have 
uh, certainly in the last seven years, but we have record amounts of nuclear power plants coming online around the world. Uh, it's an answer to not only climate change concerns with carbon, but also clean air issues in China, India, and emerging markets. Uh, so we're a company that's based in the U.S. and uh, scaled, uh, uh, scalable operations that can take advantage of the uranium market recovery. So with that, I'll close. Thank you very much.